Welcome to the Nitpicky Nerds. Today we're talking about cards that search your library. It's everything you need to know about tutors. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, Beezy, and that makes us the Nitpicky Nerds daily content. If you check out our channel, that's what we have. TCG player link in the description. Go buy cards, start with the link, end with buying cards, and then we get a kickback on the order. You're helping us out. You're helping small businesses. You're, if, even if you're listening to this, you're helping us out. Yes. Uh, if you want to help support our 50K celebration up and coming, there is a P.O. box in the description below. Send whatever silly, fun, PG thing you would like to us, and we will open it on camera. Perfect. We are talking about tutors today because we were wondering, hey, what makes tutors so good? We haven't really talked about tutors in their own video, so let's, let's freaking make one. Yes, for this video, budget will not be taken into consideration at all. Um, when we say all of these things, it's assuming that you're not on too strict of a budget. Obviously, every card becomes more playable the less budget you have. That's just how things always work. If you comment something saying about budget, I am going to just respond with the time code for when that rant started, and then we'll call it a day. Uh, so we can start this little journey through the tutors with what makes tutors good in the first place. Well, first of all, Commander is a 100-card singleton format, meaning that tutors reduce the variance. The variance is so high in this format because, well, every single one of your cards is different that when you add a tutor, well, now you just cut down the variance to make your deck a lot better. The act is a Swiss army knife. It adds X to any spell in your deck where X is the mana cost of the tutor. So if we're working with Demonic Tutor, it's any spell that is the best in that moment plus two mana. So it's really going to increase the average power of your deck. Yes. Uh, so what you're looking for in tutors to make sure you have the best ones, you want to balance between mana value and the range of the tutor's targets, meaning like how many different cards can this get? Obviously, if we're talking about something like Vamp Tutor, where it's one mana, it's as low as it's going to get, yeah. and it searches for anything, obviously that card is incredible. Yeah, so what's the best tutor possible? It's a zero mana card that says search for a card, put it in your hand. Like, yeah. That's as good as it gets for a single tutor. Yes, and they couldn't. They, you actually, I guess, the only way it could be better is if it added mana, and right. then it'd be or negative like, mana. <laughs> yeah, or then it'd be negative. Speaking of mana, mana value of tutors is huge. It's one of the biggest factors you should look at when you're trying to figure out what tutor should I play. Well, how many tutors should I play? What things do I need? So, one to two mana, great. These are fantastic rates for best the best. a tutor, especially when it says any card. We'll get to what it might tutor for later. But three mana, that ends up being like fine. Nothing special, almost like a smidge below par. The mana value like drops off with each cost because one is nuts, two is great, and then three is just okay. Yes, uh, and then four, you literally go down to miserable. These are horrible. You almost never, ever want to play a four-mana tutor unless there's super high synergy. There's going to be reasons to maybe play some four-mana tutors, but I know that in my deck building where I'm, very, I'm not limited on budget very much, I... I am never playing four mana tutors. Right. If we're talking like we're talking like Diabolic Tutor, four mana sorcery, go find any card, or like the Bolas card from Ixalan where it says the same thing. We're just not interested. It's too slow. The premium at some point, adding X to any spell in your deck is worthless, right? We can start with zero, nuts, one, two, three, okay. But now we're adding four mana or five or six to any spell in our deck. It just becomes not worth it and it sucks all the power out of whatever play we're going to make. If we're going to pay, here's an example, Soul Ring is one of the best magic cards ever printed. But if you're going to go find it with Moon Silver Key, you're now paying four mana total. I know it's over installment plans. You're paying four mana for Urgolem's Eye. That's not Soul Ring. Just because you got Soul Ring doesn't mean the tutor was worth it or it's a good tutor because it can find Soul Ring. You spent too much mana and you're just behind now. Yeah, exactly. The, uh, the reason that we can just mention this, Moon Silver Key is, we're going to be moving into another category here. The reason Moon Silver Key isn't very good overall is it's so limited. At three mana now, we're, we're at the high mana value. So we really don't want to be limited whatsoever by these tutors. For it to be as limited as it is to only get basic lands for starters, that that is the killer for me. Basic lands and just mana rocks, I'm not interested. I know there's Ashnod's Altar. There's like a few other things. There's the Cage Sun. There's these ones. But these aren't worth paying extra three mana to tutor. It becomes closer to the four plus where it's not miserable without bonuses or high synergy, but it's just meh without bonuses or high synergy. So some of the heavy artifact decks have that to justify Moonsilver Key, but 
not just to get Sol Ring. No, no, no. And the extreme example to just kind of bring it home is Planar Portal. It's six mana artifact, and then you pay six and tap it to go tutor any card. Well, it's got the any card on it, right? It says any card, but it's 12 mana for a tutor. Just because you're paying 12 to find a Necropotence, oh, the best card in the format, Mana Crypt, Sol Ring. It just completely sucks all the power out of the card you find, and it's now not worth it. Yeah. So any tutor isn't worth it just because it says the word tutor on it. Yeah, absolutely. And I know Player Portal is reusable, but then you've spent 18 mana to tutor two things on the battlefield. That's not good. It's it's terrible. And even just if you assume it, you got it out for free, and now you're paying six as a premium to go find whatever you want, you're just never going to be able to cast more than one spell a turn. You're never going to be able to take advantage of any of this stuff. Yeah. All right, so what I was saying about Moon Silver Key, the narrowness. That's what we're going to talk about now. How narrow is a tutor? Because if a tutor is extremely narrow, like Lay of the Land, that's only one mana. A one mana tutor, that's got to be insane, right? No, it only gets basic lands. It's way too narrow, and that's garbage. Yeah, it's in the insane cost, but when you find out what it searches, basic lands, which are useless and plentiful, it the spell just becomes garbage. Like, that's the second factor. you got to have both. you got to have range of tutor targets and be a reasonable mana value, or some... Uh, Outliers can go in higher synergy decks. But Fabricate, for example, is pretty bad in the average deck. You don't really want to pay three at sorcery speed to go find an artifact. But in a 40 artifact, 40 card artifact deck, 40 artifact card deck, it can pull its weight. It's going to be amazing. It's going to have half the cards in your deck it can find. It can find lands. It can find your combo piece. It can find your board wipes. It can find whatever else. Yeah, it's. I, well, I, it can find your board wipe? What, what's board wipe? Uh, the Hedron thing that exiles everything, uh, Oblivion Stone, Nevin Rolls Disc. All right, you Idiot! Sh- you've proven me wrong. Okay, but yeah, exactly. Fabricate is not at a premium rate where you're just like, oh yeah, this is great. But when your deck is so focused on artifacts that it can pretty much get you anything you're going to need for any situation, well, now you're pretty much playing a Grim Tutor, which is okay, especially if you're not in black. Yeah, Grim Tutor is totally fine, and if you're going outside the colors to find 3-mana Tutor, that's 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 decent. Once you leave black, yeah. Once you leave black, 3-mana Tutors become a little bit more acceptable, and this one is, you know, not going to be narrow at all because we have so many targets. Yeah, it's going to find everything. There's like 10 cards it won't find. Uh, so in an equipment deck, for another example, Steel Shaper's Gift has the super narrow Tutor targets of only equipment, but it's 1 mana. And the premium of just being 1 mana, that insane mana cost, makes it playable in those decks. However, if we're talking about variety and how narrow is the tutor, you're always playing Enlightened Tutor before Steel Shaper's Gift. It's the same cost, but it just finds anything. You can find Soul Ring. You can find a Mana Rock early. You can find some enchantment to put on your guy. Yeah, you just you want to stick. You want to, your tutor to get as many cards as possible. Obviously, not every single tutor gets every single card, but you want to, you're looking for what gets you the most. That's why you're always going to pick Enlightened Tutor over Steel Shaper's Gift. Enlightened Tutor gets every card Steel Shaper's Gift does. Plus about 10,000 more. Right, plus way too many more. And the last thing we want to talk about for tutors is tutors on a body. We were mostly talking about spells there, but now we got to talk about, like, all the creatures that ETB and then go find something. This is a big difference. This makes this could not make more of a difference. The creatures that tutor are usually insanely strong, especially if their mana is three or lower. It It is crazy. You're willing to take narrowness now because... The body is going to, you know, trigger your any like draw creature things like Beast Whisper. It's gonna trigger any enter the battlefield things for creatures. You can skull clamp it, you can do this, you can do that with it. You can do so many different things with a creature, whereas a sorcery just goes to your graveyard. We're we're willing to play now Stoneforge Mystic, which is a two mana steel shaper's gift. Two mana steel shaper's gift is unplayable. Sorcery, two mana. Get an enchantment or artifact to your hand is not equipment. Uh, equipment. Yeah, I almost said the right thing. Get an art, uh, get an equipment to your hand uh, is not good. But you put it on a creature, now all of a sudden this is great. Now I can flicker it. Now I can use the body for other things. I can block. I can attack. It adds so much more when you put it on a body. If you rework Grim Tutor to say search your library for a creature with toughness two or less, that card is miserable. Not even close. We just can't do anything with that. But if you throw Recruiter of the Guard in your deck, your deck's going to be way better because it ETBs, it dies. You can play it again. You can blink it. You can attack. You can block. You can skull clamp it. Whatever. Just so many extra notches get added to the card when it's a creature. So the creature tutors you got to value a little way, evaluate a little differently. Yeah, it's it is insane how much the it's Recruiter of the Guard is and Imperial Recruiter are literally one one bodies. They're the minimum body yeah. you're going to get on something, other than maybe an 0-1, but you don't see that often. 1-1s are nothing, 
but they're still so much more than an instant or sorcery in a deck that cares about creatures that you're willing to play these super narrow tutors. This isn't part of how to play or how to choose which tutors we are, but we wanted to list some of the problems that come along with tutors. Maybe you've heard some of these before. Cherries, what's the first one? Well, they just lead to repetition. The simple fact of the matter is, yeah, when you play Demonic Tutor, it can search for any card in your deck. But realistically, there's seven cards it searches for because uh, this is the best one for when I'm comboing. This is the best one for when I'm, uh, I'm missing land drops. This is the best for this. And there's like five or six or seven, six, five, six, seven, eight situations that are going to come up and you're going to get the same cards usually. Yeah, so it does lead to some staleness if your deck has, you know, let's say 20 Demonic Tutors in it. You're just going to do the same thing every game. And it's going to get real old real quick, especially with literal 20 of them. Um, they add games sooner. Also, I can find the most powerful card when I'm ahead and the most powerful card when I'm behind. So the game clock just gets drastically sped up the more tutors I put in my deck. And sometimes this is what you want if you're trying to power up your deck. More tutors means games are ending faster, which means probably good for you. If you want to, if you're playing very, very high powered EDH, yeah, tutors are amazing. And they're not making the game worse inherently. But... If you want to, like, you know, play the game, take time, hang out with your friends, and you're not just trying to end the game as fast as possible, then this is a negative. Yeah, if you're shooting for, like, hour, hour and a half games where, you know, maybe talking is the focal point and you're playing the game in the background, you're just not going to want too many tutors in your deck. They increase the power of the decks they're in. If you want to power down your deck, one of the best ways to do it, that almost you could just do this, and then the deck will be fine, just remove all the tutors. I tend not to play many of the instant sorcery, generically very strong one, two mana ones that go get anything, basically, because I like keeping my decks a little lower power. I like the variance of EDH, honestly. And, you know, when you the more tutors you add, the less variance you get. Yeah, what I've been doing is I just don't play... You know, I have a couple decks that have Demonic and Vamp, and, like, they're good decks, and they're higher power. But from now on, I'm just, I don't think I'm going to bother with it, just for, like, my own interest. I'm going to try to build this deck... Let's see what it can do. Try to make it as powerful as it can. But there's like just like this 0.1% of cards I'm just not going to include. It's literally just like Vamp and Demonic Tutors. Because I'll take the more narrow tutors, the, maybe even Grim Tutor. Just I don't want to like end the game on turn 6. Yeah, I tend to play the Creature Tutors. That's the ones that I'm, I, I love. I'm really They're big so on. good. Yeah, I'm really big on the Imperial Recruiters, the Recruiter of the Guards. Uh, what, uh, Ranger Vios. Ranger Vios, Ranger Captain of Vios. I'm really big on those ones. They're very narrow, and they don't really tend to break the game at all. They just tend to, you know, they, they do get rid of variants a bit, but I'm not getting anything broken. I'm getting Soul Ward. Oh, or Esper Sentinel. Oh, Giant Killer. Ooh, some of the best cards ever. I think that's all we wanted to say. Now you know everything about tutors. Yes, that is our video. Special shout-outs to all of our patrons. Love you all as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. Obviously, we would never want to make you com uncomfortable. Apparently, I said I we would never want to make you comfortable. No, never. Never. Uh, also, uh, want to help us celebrate 50K on the horizon. It's coming soon. P.O. Box, send us whatever you want. PG, and we're, we're going to open it in front of this camera. Yeah, it's in the description. Uh, do you like supporting local businesses, buying cards that you were going to buy anyway, and supporting the nitpicky nerds? all with several clicks on the same website, you could use TCG Player as that website. Go to the description, click the link, and then you're going to be rolling like a king or queen because you just bought the cards and supported your favorite channel. Boom. 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 Discord. We have a Discord. Come hang out. Come play Commander Games. Come DM us. Come ask for deck help. There's a deck help section. There's a meme section. There's like 4,000 people in there. It's pretty pretty cool. There's a lot of people in Discord. And that's the end of the video, so that means it's tip it time. Your turn. Yesterday, me and BZ watched the movie Escape Room Tournament of Champions. It was horrendous. It was so bad. It was it was really, really bad. The first one was like, I don't know. Like, it was really like bad. A, like a 4 out of 10. The first one wasn't very good. But we it, just for the pure like... What the heck are they doing? Why is there an escape room horror thriller movie? We like to check them out and just, my God, it's it, so bad. It was absolutely terrible. I like, wouldn't even recommend it. It wasn't even fun to watch. It was like over the top. Half of the stuff was like sci-fi-ish. It didn't make any sense. It was so stupid. They just, and the movie shouldn't have even been PG. It should have definitely been an R movie. PG-13. PG-13, sorry. It should have 100% been an R-rated movie because they took out anything that could have been fun in that viewing experience. The movie was just awful. Was so so bad. I would suggest never watching Tournament of Champions. Uh, maybe Jeopardy Tournament of Champions. That's all, That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Or if you do watch it, you gotta watch out for uh, rub your rub your blood on the money. That's the quote you of the you movie. Gotta, you gotta rub your blood rub on the money. Rub your blood on the money! <laughs> it's awful. It's so stupid. Also, it's so random because like, she gets cut by the diamond? Yeah, she gets cut like, by the diamond. Like, randomly. And then 
they're like, what do you call it when your relative dies? Blood money. Rub your blood on the money. <laughs> it's so good. It was real stupid. The whole movie was awful. Peace out, Chef Scout.